Peace, FHE fam. Now, in today's video, we're going to discuss hypoglycemia versus hyperglycemia in diabetics. We're going to be talking about the symptoms and complications of each one and what should be done immediately if you or someone you know begin experiencing symptoms of either one of these conditions. Welcome back to the channel. My name is James Lee Grant from Focus Health Elevations. And on this channel, we discuss nutrition and meal plans. We do vitamin and supplement reviews. We demonstrate proper form on a variety of different exercises. And we also discuss topics on meditation, spirituality, mental and emotional health as well. If that sounds like something you or someone you know may benefit from, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on any new videos we put out. Now our goal is to build a strong community and support system for those of us that may be experiencing the same daily challenges. Health is wealth, you know what time it is, so let's get it. There's two conditions in diabetes, one called hyperglycemia and the other one hyperglycemia, which basically we're just talking about low blood sugar and high blood sugar. So if we're talking about a low or high blood sugar level, then we must first understand and define what a normal blood sugar level, or also known as glucose level is. Glucose is the primary source of energy for all cells and organs in our bodies. Super important, right? So in order for our brain cells or our muscle cells to get energy, they need glucose. Now, if you want to know more about glucose in depth, leave a comment below and maybe we'll do a whole separate video explaining glucose even further. But now that we know just a little bit about glucose, and we're talking about low levels or high levels of glucose. What is a normal or normal range of glucose? All right, so generally speaking, a normal blood sugar range is usually between 70 milligrams per deciliter and 140 milligrams per deciliter. Now, these numbers may slightly differ depending on the source of information, but I think it could be agreed upon that if you're in between 70 and 140, you're pretty much good. But it can still get a little tricky because it also depends on the individual as well. Plus, these numbers can change over time with that same person. Like, for example, years ago, when my sugar read 80, I felt okay. But now when I take my sugar and it's 80, I know it's a little bit too low because I get those low blood sugar symptoms. And we're going to get into those symptoms shortly. Now, again, a, a normal blood sugar range has to be broken down even further than that because you have different ranges for fasting blood sugar levels and after you eat blood sugar levels. <laughs> man, I know this shit could get confusing, but hey, man, life goes on, right? So let's talk about low blood sugar levels first, which is hypoglycemia. Now, any blood sugar level below 70 is considered to be hypoglycemic. Some of the causes for someone's sugar to drop that low could be, you know, maybe they've taken too much insulin. Maybe they've missed a meal. Maybe they've been working out. It could be a whole lot of different reasons. But once that happens, they're going to start experiencing symptoms like shakiness, hunger, confusion. They can become very irritable, blurred vision, or even a decreased level of consciousness that could progress into a coma. Now, things can definitely get ugly if not addressed immediately. If your sugar is low, you need to get to something that's going to bump it up quick. I usually grab some orange juice or some grape juice or something like that, and that usually does the trick for me. Now, theoretically, they say take 15 grams or that's, you know, that's equivalent to like a half a cup or whatever you're about to drink, juice, milk, whatever. And then 15 minutes later, check your blood sugar again and see if it raised up to 70 or above. And if not, you got to repeat that whole process again. Now, what you don't want to do is overcompensate for the low blood sugar. That's why you have to wait for a while, because a lot of times, once you start feeling the symptoms, even after you take the steps to correct it, you're still feeling a little bad. So you keep chugging, thinking, oh, OK, I, I got to bring my sugar up. But at this point, you're just addressing the symptom and you're about to shoot your sugar straight out the roof. Now you got to correct that by taking some insulin or doing something to bring it back down. It just becomes a crazy roller coaster. Man. So some key things to remember about hypoglycemia. One. 
any blood sugar under 70, get to something quick to raise it back up, like juice or milk. They even sell glucose tablets. They work pretty well, too. Two, some of the symptoms include shakiness, hunger, confusion, blurred vision, and a decreased level of consciousness. Again, you want to get to something quick to raise your blood glucose level back up to 70 and above, but do not go overboard and raise it too high. It's not a roller coaster you want to be on. Believe me, it's not a fun ride. Number three, do not miss meals. Now, sometimes we may feel like, okay, I'll finish this or finish that up, then go eat. Nah, wrong move, man. Stop doing whatever it is that you're doing and just go eat. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your health. Now that we've learned a little bit about hypoglycemia, let's switch gears and talk about hyperglycemia. It's a whole different beast. Hyperglycemia or high blood sugar levels, to the best of my knowledge, is anything over 180 especially two hours after eating. So look at it this way. Basically, anyone with a healthy functioning pancreas and their system is working properly, their blood sugar level should never go past 180, even after eating. And that's for non-diabetics. Now that threshold goes out the window for diabetics. Our blood sugar just keeps going and going and going in some cases if we don't get a hold of it. Like when I first got diagnosed in 2006, my blood glucose level was 875. Now, keep in mind, anything over 180 is high, so 875 is way past normal and very dangerous. Some people go into diabetic comas at that high of a level, so I'm blessed, grateful, and fortunate that I didn't. Here's a question for the diabetics watching. What has been your highest blood sugar reading, and how did it make you feel, and what did you do to break, bring it down? Leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. But like I was saying, 875 is very serious, and I was hospitalized. Now, I may go deeper into that story in another video, but some of the symptoms of high blood sugar is different from having low blood sugar. These symptoms include increased thirst, having to urinate a lot, fatigue, extreme tiredness, shortness of breath, and dry mouth. Now, some of the causes would be not having enough insulin to cover a meal, eating a meal high in carbohydrates, drinking a, a beverage high in sugar, and believe it or not, stress. Stress can definitely have a huge impact on your blood sugar level, so get your woos on. <laughs> so what should you do if your blood sugar is too high? Well, if you're on insulin, get to your insulin quick. The sooner you bring your blood sugar down, the better. In some situations, exercising and doing some cardio, doing some light cardio, like riding a bike or walking can be beneficial, but you have to be careful in those situations because sometimes it works and sometimes it makes your sugar go higher, depending on the intensity of your exercise. Now, I've had great results with taking like a 45-minute walk. It definitely works wonders. Now, a few other things that I just want to mention that has worked for me is apple cider vinegar, cinnamon, and even pickle juice. These are just some of the things that I'm sharing that I've gotten good results from. Hey, I have an idea. Share some of the things that have worked for you down in the comments, because that's what this is really all about. We can all share info back and forth on how to improve on managing our blood sugar levels more effectively. Now, me personally, even though I'm on insulin at the moment, I'm always looking for more holistic ways to control my blood sugar properly. Now, there's some who argue that, oh, that's not possible. Or, you know, once they say once you're on insulin, yeah, you're on it for life. But I ain't, I'm, I'm not selling for that. I believe the body can heal itself with the proper nutrition and exercise and different healing herbs that were naturally placed here on this planet. We just have to discipline ourselves completely and break the bad habits that got us in this condition in the first place. We also have to have a good understanding of how the body truly works. Because I totally believe, like, if you take care of your body, it'll take care of you. So with that being said, FHE fam, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, go ahead, hit that like button. It helps to grow the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell. Until next time, may we all continue to focus on our health and elevate our lives. Peace.